Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Crypto Stew here in the Crypto Stew Stew Studio. 342 subscribers, very nice. The number keeps growing, that's what we like to see. I uh, have some friends in the real world who are recent subscribers of mine who are very, very new to the Bitcoin game. And I was looking for a video to explain Bitcoin and blockchain to them that was good. And I went through a lot of them and I was really shocked. I really thought there would be like some killer videos on YouTube explaining blockchain and Bitcoin that I could just give them a link to. And I didn't really like any of them. So I'm going to do one which will probably suck but at least I gave it a shot. And of course I don't have like the little doodling um, cartoon going like they all did and stuff. So you're just going to have to bear with me for my, 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 my ghetto-ness. But I'm just going, this one's just about blockchain, all right? I might discuss Bitcoin a little bit at the end, but this is not about Bitcoin, this is about blockchain, all right? I'm giving a simple, basic explanation of blockchain. And if I omit anything, I'm doing it for simplicity, not because I don't know it or not because I forgot. See, I even have this here, another lame visual aid. You will hear a basic explanation of block, blockchain. You will not hear about ASIC miners, difficulty adjustments, or hash rates. These are things people can learn later on. It's not needed for a basic explanation, which is what I'm doing here. So I'm just going to get started. I don't want the video to be too long. What is, what are, what is the goal here? The goal is a, in a system of information that cannot be hacked, cannot be changed, and is available to everyone a, and is 100% reliable. Now, I know you might think we have systems like that now, but we don't. I mean, you're always constantly hearing about, you know, Target's system was hacked and your credit card uh, information got out or, or um, you know, your bank account has the wrong amount in it because of a, some kind of computer error, all right? Our, our systems are not 100% trustworthy, and nobody really trusts any computer system 100% to be accurate. So imagine a system that's out there in the open, could be searched by anyone, and is always 100% accurate. It might be the most valuable thing that man has created in decades if you could create such a system. So for the purposes of my explanation, we're going to use um, a system that records and publishes sports scores. Sports scores is what we're going to use for my explanation. So imagine we wanted to create a system that collects the final, the final scores from sporting events and then publishes them. And they're always right, 100% of the time accurate. And you can't change the information once it's out there. And anyone anywhere on the internet could search it. That's what we're trying to create. So what these people came up with, and it, don't concern yourself with who they are. It's not, again, we're getting basic, basic, basic. What these people came up with is let's say we got 10 computers together and these 10 computers are monitoring all the sports games that are occurring everywhere in the world. Now you have to accept that sports games are always happening. I mean it's a big world out there. There's always somebody throwing some kind of ball at some kind of apparatus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, there's some sports game going on. And these computers, these 10 computers are monitoring all the sports games in the world 24 hours a day, and whenever a final score happens, the computers record that score, and then they pump out the information in 10, at every 10 minutes. They, comp they compile their data for 10 minutes, and then they publish it. So every 10 minutes, they're observing all the games. Then they compare their results against each other to make sure all 10 have the same information. And then every 10 minutes, they publish. And then this set of scores will be searchable to everyone in the world via the internet uh, as, uh, as information that they can search for. So I'm going to give you an example. Imagine it's a Wednesday night and it's like, I don't know, 11 p.m. on a Wednesday. So the only thing going on is baseball at the time. So these uh, five baseball games all end inside the same, the same 10 minute stretch. All 10 computers observe that these five baseball games ended all 10 computers observed that these were the final scores of all 10 games, of all five games. And in a t and when the 10 minutes are up, because they, they do it on every 10-minute block, let's say they do it on the 10-minute marker. So they do it at 
um, you know, on the hour, then 10 minutes after, then 20 minutes after. Every 10 minutes, they pump out the scores that they've compiled and agreed on, okay? So at the 10 minute, next 10 minute marker, they publish these five scores that all 10 computers agree are accurate. Once they've been published, they cannot be changed because the, all 10 computers keep a record of all the previous blocks and they always have to match, okay? So this will go on and on and they'll keep accruing scores and keep pumping out blocks of information. All right, and, and this information becomes so reliable that gamblers use it for the results for their betting. So that if uh, you bet um, on the Rays, your bet would pay out because it's been recorded that the Rays won 5 to 2. Okay, so this block would go fine. All 10 computers observe these five results, and the block publishes, and everybody can search and find this information, and everything's right with the world. All right, so here's the next 10 minutes. All right, you have these four games that finished in the next 10 minute block. You got the Yankees beating the Mets, the Rockies beating the Astros, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, now suppose, now all 10 computers observed that the Yankees beat the Mets, but suppose some big time gangster bet huge that the Mets would win. And he's not very accepting of the fact that he's about to, that he's gonna lose all this money when the score is published. So he decides, well, what if I can get myself a hold of one of these computers that keeps the record of all the sports scores. What if I can get a hold of one of these computers and change the game? All right, well, suppose he does. He gets a hold of one of the computers that, that is observing all the games and recording the games and recording the scores, and he changes the Yankees game and Mets score so that the Mets win instead of the Yankees. Well, what would happen? The other nine computers would have the correct score, and the one that he tampered with would have the fake score. Well, in that case, it would be the majority that would rule. So the Yank, the, <clears throat> he would have failed in his effort to change the score. And the correct score of the Yankees beating the Mets 7-3 would be the score that published. So even though he got his whole hands on one of the computers that make up the 10 that are doing the uh, recording, it wouldn't have accomplished his goal of changing the information that went out. So the information is still 100% accurate. Okay, let's suppose he got his hands on two of the computers. The same thing. He can change the score on two of those computers, but the other eight are all going to have the correct score, and what's going to publish is the correct score, the Yankees beating the Mets 7-3. to three. Okay, but here's the big one. What if he can get his hands on six of the computers, and he can change this score to make it so the Mets actually beat the Yankees? Well, if he did that, if he changed the score on six of the computers and made it that the Mets bet the Yankees, then that fake score that he created would be the one that published. And the system will have been corrupted, and no one would ever trust it again. And his bet would pay out because he would get his money because they were using this system uh, for who won the games. So he would receive his money, and then the system will have been found to have been corrupted, and no one will ever trust this system again. So... The goal was, how can we prevent this bad actor from being able to accomplish this feat of changing the score on six computers? Well, one thing you know is you wouldn't want all, six, all the computers to be, all 10 computers to be in one room. Because if all the computers are together, if he can get to one of them, he can get to all of them, and then he can change something. So the easiest way to be able to change something would be if they were all together, which would mean the hardest way would be if they were all far apart. So let's have all 10 computers as far apart as humanly possible. Let's put one in the United States, one in Canada, one in Brazil, two in China, one in India. Just spread them out. Spread out these 10 computers. They're using the Internet anyway. They don't need to be near each other. And so if, they're, if these 10 computers are as far apart as humanly possible, well, then that's better. It's going to be that much harder for him to get his holds on six of them, right? And another way we can make it harder is if instead of 10 computers, why don't we have 20? If we have 20 computers and we have them all spread out all over the world, well, then he would have to get his hands on 11 of them to change the information. So that would be even more secure, right? The more computers we have observing and publishing this information every 10 minutes and making and comparing and making sure it's right, the more computers we have doing that, the more computers he would have to get a hold of to have more than half. So if we had 40 computers, he would have to get his hands on 21 of those computers in order to change the scores and in order to make the information wrong. So that is essentially how blockchain works. Now, 
as far as how secure Bitcoin, so obviously now the further apart the computers are and the more computers you have, the more secure your network is. That's what I want people to understand is that that's the value. The more computers you have keeping the information and the more far apart and spread out throughout the world that the computers are, the more difficult it becomes to corrupt that information and therefore the more reliable the information would be. Okay? Well, we don't know exactly how many computers make up Bitcoin's network, but we know based on the amount of computing power that's being used that it's over 4 million computers spread around the world. And I know that there are clumps in certain areas, but we have over 4 million computers spread around the world that are keeping the Bitcoin system going. 4 million computers spread around the world. That's how secure the network is. The Bitcoin network is so secure that you have a, over a trillion dollars in value locked up in it out there in the open on the internet for all to see or any, anyone can access it and it's completely unhackable. I mean, I have money in Bitcoin that, and I go to bed secure every night that it'll be there when I wake up in the morning and every day that it goes without being hacked is another day it proves its worth. And another day the network gains more computers and another day the network gets bigger and stronger and um yeah so that i'm not going to get into bitcoin now this was just to give someone a basic understanding of blockchain i hope that was good um if i helped even one person who didn't understand it before understand it now then i did my job because i only have like 300 and what am, what am i up to now 300 and 342 subscribers remember please subscribe and hit the bell please join the crypto stew family um yeah, I hope I helped somebody out there. Uh, and until next time, uh, this is Crypto Stew signing off.